good driver. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I got into Vietnam last night. My flight was really good. I think I'm gonna talk about that in the vlog, like take time and talk about my flight and everything that happened. Everything was smooth. I had a hiccup with my Airbnb though. I got scammed out of $33. So, can't wait to talk about that. Um, my impression of Vietnam, I really like it. Can I go this way? So, I really like it. The city has, this country has a lot of character. It reminds me of Hangzhou, China. Right now I'm at the lake. See, this kind of, yeah, it reminds me of Hangzhou. Because um, when I went to see my friend Magpai, we, she worked near the lake. While I'm walking and exploring, looking like a tourist, um, I'll tell you things. So I looked at shops and the first shop I think opened up at eight. Some of them were open up earlier. So Vietnamese people, they get up early and then stuff didn't close to about two in the morning. Or at least that's what time my friend said. So they get up early in the morning, which is good, because I thought, okay, I'm going to get up early. Nobody's going to be out. I woke up, motorbikes, everybody's already out working. It was 8 o'clock. So, I mean, they had been up probably since 6 o'clock. Um, and then they stay up late. And I'm staying in um, Old Quarter. I think that's what it's called. That's like the most oldest place in Vietnam is Old Quarter. So I'm staying there. So far, like, I really like Vietnam. This is somewhere I would stay for, not forever, but I could stay here for a couple, you know, a year, maybe a year. And um, just really enjoy everything the country offers. Look at this building. track that's in Vietnam so I think like at a certain time the train comes and um, people like live here by the train so why I am taking a break I will tell you the story of what happened so my flight from Texas to Vietnam was good so everything went smoothly when I went to check in the lady at the airport, she asked me, did I want the window seat or the middle seat? And um, I told her I'd take the window seat. So I ended up getting a window seat. And then when I got there, there was always, there was already a lady and her son. There was already a lady and her son there. So I already knew, like, great. This is a long flight to be sitting next to kids. 
I don't have a problem with kids, but I don't like sitting next to them on the plane because there's no rest. So I show him there may be, maybe there's a lesson in this, you know? So I, um, I, I told them, I was like, hey, you know, that's my seat because the little boy was sitting there. So she had him sit over. And of course, he was already comfortable with me. And he just started talking to me. He was asking me that I like watching Spongebob. And I was like, the flight hadn't even started yet. I don't want to be going through this the entire flight. And then, like, he was, I, had, I wanted to watch a movie on the plane. And he wanted to look out the window, which I totally get. Like, I've been a kid. You want to look out the window. But I had turned down the blinds so it could be dark so I could see the screen. And he would cross over me because he's in the middle. He would cross over me and push push the blinds up. And I'm just like, okay, I'm not, I don't want to do this. And then he kept, you know, bumping into me. And I just, I didn't have the patience to, to deal with it the entire trip. So um, another thing is he had his mom's phone and he was playing the music loud. And she wasn't telling him to turn it down. She wasn't saying anything. And then when the flight attendant came, she was like, turn it down, turn it down, turn it down. So I said, okay, you know what? I'm not even gonna deal with this. So I got up and I asked the flight attendant, I said, hey, do you have a, actually when I got up, I saw there was like a lot of space, a lot of empty seats on the plane. So I was like, great, I can just ask her, can I switch seats? And I, and I did. I said, you know, excuse me, can you? Can I switch seats? And so she knew exactly where I was sitting. So she was like, oh yeah, just a few moments. Um, let me find you a seat. I said, okay, cool. So I thought, um, I was sitting in economy. So I thought, okay, she's, I'm fine with whatever. Just I just wanted some peace and quiet. So she ended up, she said, you know, come follow me. And so I'm thinking she's just gonna put me in another economy seat but she ended up upgrading my seat. So I ended up getting a bigger space. I think I got like premium. I think she put me in premium. I thought it was I thought it was business class because that's what it looked like. But I think it was, it was premium. And I had my own row and I was like in the front. So I had a whole bunch of leg space. And I was just like, yes, like, thank you, Lord. Um, so, I appreciate ANA, and oh, I flew with ANA, ANA Airlines, so that's a Japanese airline, and I really enjoyed flying with them. That was my first time, and I would fly with, I would fly with them again if the opportunity came. So anyway, I flew from Houston to Tokyo, very comfortable, had a good flight, and then I had a layover in Tokyo, and then from Tokyo I flew to Vietnam, and I arrived in Vietnam around 9.40 at night in Hanoi. And then, like, everything was smooth. They didn't ask me for a, a COVID test. They didn't ask to see my visa. They didn't ask to see anything. They just saw my passport and then stamped it and was like, go. I was like, you know, I went through all of that to get the visa, which they checked it. They checked my visa in America. They made sure I had the visa. But when I made it to Vietnam, they didn't ask me for anything. They just wanted to see my passport. And then, um... Um, when I finally made it through, it was this lady I had met in a while. We were on the same plane. So she used to be in the maze. And she was trying to, like, hitch a ride. And I'm like, I don't, I didn't feel comfortable because I didn't know her. I just met her at the airport. I don't know if this is a scam or what. So I, I was kind of, like, dragging. So I said, oh, I need to go inside and I need to get some cash for the taxi. And she's like, no, you can just do Grab. Grab is like Uber taxi here. I was like, no, you know, my network is slow. It's not working. I'm going to go inside and get some cash. And so I left and I was inside for a bit. And then when I came, when I walked back outside the airport where the taxis were, she was gone. Oh, I wasn't looking for her. So I had like gotten to a taxi. I got in a taxi and I headed out.
playing beautiful. You did really great. Oh my Thank god. You. Do you have like a card I can call you? He is so nice. He said he's gonna stay there. So I think I found my driver for today. He's I was like, let me pay you. He's like, no, I'll stay here and wait. And then when you come back. So he's really chill. I'm gonna this is a temple of literature. I crossed something off my list. I always wanted to like be in Vietnam on the back of a motorbike. It is um, 11.43, kind of tired now, so I think I'm going to actually go home and take a, well, go back to my room and take a rest.